I've always found it really difficult to say when it actually started because I've always kind of struggled with food and body image issues and um, it's hard to know when it was actually an eating disorder. I'm a dancer, so I'm in the mirror a lot. I noticed the eating disorder affecting my ability to dance quite greatly and I knew my teacher was noticing and that really bothered me because I really look up to her. To me, at least, being skinnier was meaning I'm better than the rest. I didn't want to be healthy. I didn't want to be average. I wanted to be below average. I wanted to be unhealthy. Looking sick was the goal. Everything in her life had changed from, you know, her social activities with her friends. She became very um, isolated and was isolating herself. We noticed a lot, a big change in, in her uh, smiling less and, and, and then she became very neutral emotionally. And she just was unhealthy. It just um, became very obvious that she uh, was now an unhealthy person. It's like a bomb going off at, at the beginning, you know? You don't know what the heck's going on. You don't know what's up or down. Coping with an eating disorder in the family can be overwhelming. Meal times in particular can be extremely difficult for the youth, parents, and siblings. Meal support strategies can be used before, during, and after meals to provide structure and support for youth with eating disorders. The ideas presented here are supported by research and are used in eating disorder treatment centers around the world. This video will provide families with the tools to help get through mealtimes with less anxiety and at the same time help the youth to complete their meals and begin the road to recovery. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm 19 years old and I had anorexia. Um, I was very restrictive about what I ate and I counted every morsel for a long period of time that I consumed. And I would just look at treadmills and ellipticals and anything that had calories on it and I would just input output. If I ate 200 calories, I have to get 210 calories out on the treadmill and I wouldn't stop until I did that. When my daughter was about in grade 10, I began to notice that she didn't seem to want to eat with us or as often or, or as much as what we thought would be a normal dinner. We started to notice that she was going into the bathroom a lot after dinners, uh, turning on the radio so that we couldn't hear. You know, we thought it was odd that she was playing music or playing the radio. And we just felt there was something not quite right. And it took a number of months before we could actually ask her, you know, is there something happening? Our daughter started controlling more of what she was eating, getting a lot more involved in uh, planning meals, shopping, pulling out cookbooks. And that was the first we really started wondering what was going on as she was doing it. We felt excessive exercising did not want to interact with anyone, didn't want to interact with friends, didn't want to go to school, just kind of hated everything and didn't really want to be living and engaging with life. If I go back to the beginning of the eating disorder, my, it was just sheer terror and hopelessness and, and um, it sucked us into becoming obsessed with observing what she was doing and it was just a really very negative time until we got the help that we needed. Structure and support around mealtimes is critical in helping a youth recover from an eating disorder. Whether they suffer from anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, or eating disorder not otherwise specified, EDNOS, all three of these disorders are serious illnesses with potentially life-threatening consequences and food is the medicine that we use to treat these illnesses. Families and caregivers play a critical role in providing structure and support during mealtimes. 
most families have found that the approach they take has a big impact on the mood and behavior of their children. Throughout all the strategies presented in the video, please remember the following. 1. Remain calm. Children will pick up on your anxiety, which will likely make them more anxious. 2. Be confident. The more confident you appear, the more reassured they will feel. 3. Be consistent. Stick with what you've decided and don't negotiate. 4. Be compassionate. Understand that they are doing something that is very difficult for them. She knows, she knows you have, you to, have eat to eat at 5.30. What is she, what gonna, is she bring gonna bring home? home? She doesn't, she doesn't get, it. get it. What if what she if brings she fast, fast food? food? It's got it's so, so much fat. fat. It's too, too much, much food. food. It's gonna make you, make you fat. fat. Tell, her Tell her you already, already ate. ate. You are you not are going not to eat this. It's too much. Make her get something else. Something safer. Sorry I'm late, I don't at work. Mom, you said dinner was going to be at 5.30. Now I'm going to be too full at snack time. I'm sorry. I thought we could have something quick. I just knew I wasn't going to have time to make dinner. I'm not eating that! Okay, you have to eat. <laughs> it's just this one time. Just looking back, um, having an eating disorder produced a lot of anxiety, a lot of it really irrational and that I can't explain, but um, it was just felt really scary to um, be going into a meal that I didn't know what it was or um, not being able to measure it and stuff. It was very anxiety provoking. My mother didn't understand um, the importance of time and what the meal plan that they had sent and given us or explained to us meant. And I remember being really frustrated and I was like, why won't she just give me the same amount of food that they say at the same time? And I remember my dad trying to like give me too much food and I was like, why can't you just give me the right amount of food that they say? I. I think I wanted them to take it more seriously than they were, but I didn't want to be the one to say it. Lack of structure and predictability can cause a lot of anxiety in youth with eating disorders. When youth don't know what's coming, they may worry about every possible meal that parents might prepare. Planning meals and snacks well ahead of time can help lower anxiety and control arguments during mealtimes. Most youth report that knowing what is for dinner in advance helps them get ready for it and makes it easier to eat. Meal planning minimizes negotiation during mealtimes by giving youth some choices and a chance to discuss meals well ahead of time. Planning also ensures adequate nutrition. Having a plan helps ensure that there is enough food for the youth delivered at the right times and that the food being served will provide their child with the nutrition they need to be healthy. Some strategies that families have found helpful include planning several days in advance. This will give you time to work through any disagreements that you and your child might have about the meals. Providing only minimal choices. A few choices can be helpful, but too many can sometimes be overwhelming for your child. Address who, what, when and where in your planning. Be specific about who will be involved, what you're going to eat, what time you will eat, and where the meal will take place. Okay, next Friday, you wanna have chicken or fish? Can't we just have vegetarian stir fry? We've been over this. You know, you need to have either chicken or fish. Which would you prefer? Chicken. Okay then, we're agreed. We'll do chicken and rice, milk, 
green salad and juice. Now I'm not going to be home until about 5.30, so we'll plan on eating every day next week around 6 o'clock or so, okay? I think at the very beginning having a fair amount of structure was really helpful for me. Having like a limited amount of choice of the different options of things I can eat and having it at specific times of day and stuff was really predictable and comfortable for me and it helped me um, get my momentum and start eating again. We still had a sort of a meeting at the beginning of each week as to what was going to be cooked during the week. So if Frances knew uh, macaroni cheese was coming, um, she could prepare herself. Uh, she did have a choice in what we ate as a family. Mm -hmm. Um, but once we had decided what we were going to eat that week, then the negotiation phase was over. I think and she didn't have really a well. choice after that. When it was a well-planned meal, I had a lot, I felt calmer. And I didn't get as many eating disorder thoughts. There wasn't like that voice telling you, you need to stop eating now, it's too much. Um, I think it was easier to take my time to eat. What are you putting in there? Are you using butter? Yes, I always use butter for this recipe. Well, how much are you putting in there? Not that much. You need to measure it. You should only put two tablespoons in. I'm not eating that. Before meal times, when the meal was being prepared, there was definitely a lot of anger, lots of anger, and anger kind of brought out by fear of not knowing. And there was a, some snooping and telling my parents that they were wrong about what, the, what they were putting in. That was hard, it was really hard, and I got really angry, and I made really everybody in the house uncomfortable. Um, probably made my parents feel like they were doing everything wrong. Youth often want to be involved in meal preparation and serving, but this can be very stressful for them and at the same time disruptive for parents. Youth are often worried about the ingredients of the meal and portion sizes. It may therefore be helpful to set some ground rules. For example, no negotiations are allowed in the kitchen. Everyone can have a chance to discuss the meal when it's being planned. Once a meal is agreed on, it shouldn't change. If necessary, remove the youth from the kitchen until recovery enables them to participate. Avoid measuring when cooking and serving and avoid diet or low-fat foods. Finally, caregivers have final word on portion sizes if they feel that the youth has not served themselves enough. I'm gonna start on dinner. We've discussed this. When you're in the kitchen, we both get stressed out. Are you gonna put butter in it? I won't eat it if you put butter in it. I'll make it the same way as I always do. Now, we decided it would be a good time for you to do something with your dad. During meal preparation, um, we found it really helpful for her um, in the early stages not to be a participating and be even in the area because she was very um, specific in what was going into her food and if she saw something that she didn't like, 
then it made mealtime and uh, very difficult. She didn't want to eat it. It was a regimen and uh, certainly early days we were going to prepare and, and our daughter was going to eat what was there and she accepted that. I think that it was helpful for me to be separated and just accept that um, it was going to be made for me and that I would eat it. I would have it and I um, wouldn't have that chance to manipulate what goes into it. Later on, as I got better, I was allowed to be involved again and I was allowed to serve my own food again as a step up. Here you go, sweetheart. I'll be back in a couple minutes. I just have to look for that file that I was working on. Look at this. This is way too much. Mmm, that looks like a nice, healthy breakfast you have there. That's too much. You can't eat all that. You'll feel terrible. You can't let her win. It's too, too much, much fat. fat. Tell, her Tell her to make something, something else. else. Tell, Tell her you're, you're not hungry. hungry. It's, it's not, not healthy. healthy. You're, you're strong. strong. You, don't you don't have to have, have any. any. It's too much. I'm not eating it. Sweetheart, you have to. I'm not eating it. <laughs> eating disorder thoughts that would come up during meals would be this is too this has too much fat for me or this is has too much calories for me um, this is going to make you fat and they're kind of things that really don't make any sense when unless you're like unless they're in your brain which they still don't make sense but at the time they're just justified because they're your eating disorder when I was eating anything, going through my head was, how much am I going to exercise to have to burn this off? Um, trying to measure things out, um, count them, just what could I do to make this less calories than it is? What could I do to get rid of this? How can I make my output more so that I can get rid of this? So it was quite an overwhelming experience mentally. Um, as well as emotionally. When a child is in recovery from an eating disorder, the eating disorder has been training the youth to avoid food at all costs. This makes the actual act of eating food very stressful for children suffering from an eating disorder. Families can use strategies to reduce stress and anxiety at the table, even though it is very difficult for a youth with an eating disorder to eat. Try to create a positive atmosphere that focuses on the social aspect of meals, which includes sitting down and eating as a family. Avoid sensitive topics such as food, weight, calories, or appearance. Even topics like school, friends, or hobbies can be stressful for some youth, so be aware of the topics that are sensitive for your child. Use distraction to draw attention away from the meal. Use strategies that work for your family. Tell stories, do crossword puzzles, watch a favorite show, whatever you find helpful. Remind yourself to remain calm, confident, consistent, and compassionate. Use short, supportive phrases in your own words and stay focused on completing the meal. Help me with the crossword puzzle. Let's see, one down. Anything happening at school today? No. Let's turn on the radio. You have to leave for school soon, so you need to start on your food. 
I can't. I'm just not hungry. I know you don't always feel hungry at mealtimes, but you still have to eat it. It's too much food. This is the right amount of food for you. But I've never had to eat this much before. I know. It's more than what you're having. But this is what you need now. My friends don't eat this much. They're way thinner than I am. And no one makes them eat breakfast. We're not talking about your friends right now. This is what you need to eat to be healthy. I just can't do it. I understand that it's really hard for you right now. But I've seen you do hard things before. I'm not having the eggs. You know you need to have it all. Let's just start. Pick up your spoon. I know you can do it. I was thinking of picking up a movie tonight on the way home. Is there anything you want to see? Maybe something funny. Oh, there's that new one that just came out. Whatever you do, don't talk about food during meal times. Anything but food. Like, because that's all that she's kind of thinking about is like, oh God, I gotta eat all this stuff. And so the last thing you wanna do is give in to that sort of mode. You wanna put her mind away from that kind of stuff, right? Don't talk about eating disorders. Don't talk about skinny people, like celebrities, models. Don't talk about that. And don't bring up how thin you've gotten or how sick you look or how emaciated you look at the, at the dinner table. That's almost, that's a compliment for someone in an eating disorder. If you tell someone who's really sick, you look really thin, they're thinking, yes, finally, my work has paid off. I've done this for so long and I'm, people are finally noticing that I'm below average. Healthy to me equals fat. I hate that word. I hated it. If she got really anxious, um, we used to sit with her and say, you know, you can do it, you're brave, you're gonna have a life, you're, you're very brave. And she loved to hear how brave she was because she really was scared of eating and she was terrified. It felt amazing to be told that I'm brave and that I'm being recognized for the battle that I'm going through and that my family is behind me on this, hearing those things just motivated me to just keep going. I can't believe you ate that. You should have tried harder. You're weak. Don't you feel awful? How could you have done this? Do something! If you don't you do don't something do about this, this, you're gonna get, you're gonna get fat. fat. Hey, I thought you were gonna help me clean up. No, I have to go do my homework. Look, I finished my dinner. Can I please just go? Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. Well, come get me if you need help. So during post meal time, um, I'd often feel very guilty and just a lot of regret that I didn't put up a fight and that I actually ate it. A lot of negative self-talk um, and just feeling really awful. 
sometimes physically awful, especially at the very beginning when um, my body was adjusting to having food again. Um, it sometimes it just felt really physically sick and really uncomfortably full. At home, I would run upstairs and do sit-ups on my bed or sneak in exercise here and there, take the long way around the house so that I could get a few extra steps in, um, trying to be discreet so that no one would really notice, trying to be quiet about it. For some youth, the time after a meal can be more stressful than the meal itself. They may feel terribly guilty and may experience physical pain from eating more than they are used to. They have overwhelming feelings which they may deal with in unhealthy ways. To prevent these types of behavior, use distraction and supervision to provide some time for those feelings to naturally fade to a more manageable level. It may be helpful to plan structured activities with your child after meals, such as games, homework, or watching a favorite movie. I can't believe you ate that. You should have tried harder. You're weak. Don't you feel awful? How could you have done this? Do something! You want to help me clean up? Um, no, I have to go do my homework. Okay, you could do it down here with me. It's fine, I have it all set up on my desk upstairs. Well, I'll have to wait. I want us to do something together. Tell you what, why don't we hold off on the dishes? And maybe catch that new show that we PVR'd last night? That actually sounds kind of nice. <laughs> she really felt full and it was very uncomfortable. It was hard to watch, you know, you want to fix them and, and make them feel comfortable. So little things like a, you know, a hot water bottle, you know, on the stomach just to um, relax her. Um, watch a movie or play a game, relaxing activities to help that time pass. Things I felt really helped me were to watch TV, to be with someone, to be talking to someone. I had coloring books at the beginning that just getting my hands moving helped me. Knitting, doing something or having some sort of distraction, usually with a family member. We might have had a few more movie nights, um, relaxed with more calming music in the background, encouraging our children to sit in the living room and read for a little while. We didn't let our daughter just disappear into her room after meals. Uh, we actually tried to be more interactive and social, and I think that really helped the transitions. Helping your child recover from an eating disorder can be a difficult process, but the tools and strategies outlined in this video can help mealtimes go more smoothly, reduce anxiety for everyone involved, and make it easier for youth to get the nutrition that they need. Recovery from an eating disorder can take months or years, but recovery is possible. Be prepared for setbacks and seek professional help as needed. Don't give up. Seek every opportunity of treatment that you can. Um, show support. Um, just you have to keep fighting and eventually you will win the battle. This experience uh, has had a lot of impact on our family. Mostly positive now that we're through it. Uh, it brought us together, uh, it made us realize the importance of continuing to communicate and to uh, ask each other how we're doing and to be a unit. But going back to those pre-diagnosis stages and trying to figure out, well, what did I do wrong? Why didn't I see this? Oh, I can't believe I missed that. I, those are questions of the past but we can very much as parents and families support 
what comes next and work through uh, the diagnosis and the shock of it to the language that we learn and work together on as we educate ourselves and find ways to move forward together and never to feel alone. Having someone to support you while you're going through an eating disorder is really vital. Luckily for me, I had more than one person, but even just one person can make a huge difference. They can be determined and they can be just as strong and willing to fight Ed as you are. Um, I kind of picture in my head like a tug of war and the eating disorder is on one side and you're on the other side and you can't beat him alone. But if you have one or two or three or four or five people behind you also pulling, there's no way that one eating disorder can beat a whole line of people. If I um, were to rewrite my history, I would leave the eating disorder in there because I think that it's shaped who I am. It's made me a strong, resilient woman. I think that um, the therapy brought my family closer together. And although it was a very difficult, trying experience, it was something that shaped me into the person that I am today. And it's, I think it's made me a more compassionate, empathetic person because I felt that pain and that struggle. It definitely brought our family closer together and it was an opportunity to really get to know Frances quite intimately as an adolescent. And we really grew to admire her and see her strengths. And um, it was, it's not some, I, it has been a privilege actually to journey uh, with her with this, even though it was a really, really hard process. I now have so much energy in dance I can actually do things properly, I can do them full out, I can kick my leg and it actually moves somewhere because it has some weight to it, it has power, I have muscles, I can hold myself on a handstand because I have muscles in my arm. My emotional and physical um, recovery are now like together. I'm back at school and I'm graduating and I'm living my life as a normal person. I love food, and not in a weird way. I enjoy eating a variety of food. Um, I love eating out, I love trying new things. It doesn't scare me anymore. Eating is just part of my life, and I really like cooking and eating and going to restaurants, and I think that it's part of my life. It's not that much of a struggle anymore at all. It's, I feel really liberated, actually.